When the Deepwater Horizon spill occurred on 20 April 2010, I was preparing to leave for Bremen to have my first exhibit in Germany. It's an irony in my work that bad things are my business, and I regretted that I would miss this accident of the century. I wish it had been so. Mobile, Alabama, a city I know well as a southerner, was the city closest to the spill. I connected with pilot Tom Hutchings, a committed environmentalist, who said, Sure thing, come on down, we'll fly out there. There was so much air traffic over the source, helicopters going back and forth to the rigs, planes spraying dispersants, surveillance and press planes, that the military positioned planes with flight controllers constantly circling far above the spill. Every morning before we flew, I would hide under the wing out of the sun for Tom to call the air traffic controllers and ask them about their children, their day, and tell them what a great job they were doing and casually say that we were thinking of coming out as if we were going for iced tea at a friend's house. But I'm convinced this is why we were never denied access like so many journalists were. It was brutally hot at the source, the air filled with hydrocarbons, exhaust from all of the ships and planes, fumes from the flaring of the excess oil, and methane perkling out of the ocean from the gushing well a mile below the surface. It was fascinating and traumatic. We would discuss for hours the contradictions between what we could see and the story being told to the world by the media. And then I would take a break and go back to New York, and it was like entering a surrealist movie. Nothing there had changed, but for me the world was completely different. People would ask me, what's it like down there? And of course, there was no way to describe it. I would talk every day to my pilot and then plan the next trip down. <laughs>